Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I'm going to go over a new novel that is coming out from Marvel Comics called Captain Marvel Liberation Run. And part of the reason why I want to go over this is because I went over something similar to this about a month ago talking about books that are coming out both from Marvel and DC. And I asked a question, I said, what would happen if they started to take these books, these light novels, romance novels, YA novels, and started to make them canon? That is to say, when you're normally reading your comic book, sometimes you see someone say something and there's a little asterisk and it says, see Fantastic Four number 246 or something of the like. But what would happen if that little asterisk instead led to a box that said, see the Captain Marvel novel Liberation Run? Would you actually read comics after that? Would you want to read comics? Would it make you read comics more? Or would it make you read comics less? Because I would say there are a lot of comic fans out there who are novel fans as well. But at the same time, there's a lot who aren't. There's a lot of people who just like comic books. And if it says you need to go for backstory to a novel that you're never going to read, well, a lot of people will take that as a slap in the face and say, well, I'm not going to read comics anymore. And... The reason why I thought this was going to happen was because of the number of novels coming out from both Marvel and DC. But the thing is that these novels, as someone had pointed out in my comments just a week ago, is a good place to draw in that female audience that Marvel especially wants to draw in. Because I've gone over a number of things in my videos just over the last week showing that Marvel is specifically targeting women. They want to get rid of their male audience and they want to draw in this female audience. But the problem is that really the audience for comics is males so they're not having such a good go at it but one of the things that they could do is to switch these characters to novels and women like novels a lot more than they like comic books so if they could take these characters and put them into novels and that actually become canon for the comics then they have a much stronger hold on comics and are able to pump out these female stories and I would say that in quotation marks as feminist stories that was my assertion just a month ago. And here we have something that I think actually confirms that. Because I was on the Marvel Twitter site, and I saw a link from the Twitter site to the actual Marvel site. Because the actual Marvel site really is just a maze of pages. You can't find anything there. How they would actually promote anything through that site itself, I don't know. So they use Twitter specifically. So I saw this link, and I clicked on it, and it took me to this article. And this article is a article that has been put out by Marvel itself for the Marvel website. So written by Marvel with an employee of Marvel.com asking the questions and the author who is also an employee of Marvel answering the questions. So it's a puff piece that is written by Marvel for Marvel on the Marvel website. And so this interview is specifically what Marvel wants you to have as a takeaway for this book. And as I had said a while ago when going over one of these kinds of articles, when you read these kinds of articles, what you really need to do is read through the entire thing and then look at it backwards. Because what they tend to do is take all of the important information and start putting it in the middle of the article and then they really actually tell you what they're talking about at the end of the article. And I think they do this because they have an agenda. Quite specifically, I will show you a feminist agenda once again. And the thing is that you're not actually going to get to the meat of the story and what they actually want you to hear until you get to the end. Because, of course, if you start reading the article and you don't agree with their political propaganda, by the time you get to the middle of the article and it starts in on it, you're going to give up on the article and you're not actually going to get to the end. So you don't actually get to hear that important information, which is at the end. So what happens at the end of this article? Well, at the end of this article, there is a little note and it says this. The tie-in novel from Marvel Comics and Titan Books is now available wherever books are sold. Now, did you catch that? The tie-in novel from Marvel Comics and Titan Books. So this is to be a tie-in novel. This novel is supposed to tie in to the Marvel Comics. Now, when I first saw that, I said to myself, that's what it really looks like to me, but I was second-guessing myself, and then I saw the next line, and it said, Read an excerpt from Captain Marvel Liberation Run 
here. And it had a link for you to click on so you could go to another part of the Marvel website in order to read this little excerpt. And by the way, I went through their Twitter feed and this other link to this other page on the Marvel website doesn't appear anywhere on their Twitter site. So in order to get to this page, First, you got to go to Twitter, then you got to see this tweet, then you got to click on the Marvel.com link, which takes you to Marvel.com to this puff piece article, and then you have to read through the entire article, get to the end, see the link for the excerpt, hit that link, and it will then take you to another part of Marvel.com. And what specifically is the title of this second page? The title of this second page is Carol Meets Medusa in Exclusive Captain Marvel Liberation Run Excerpt. The new Titan Books slash Marvel Comics tie-in novel is now available. So this is the header on that second page. By the way, I'll put the link for both of these articles in the description if you want to go look at them. Plus, I'll put the excerpt up in the background if you want to actually read it here with this video. But the important point is here again, here we have the header for this page, and it is quite specifically referring to the novel as a Titan Books slash Marvel Comics tie in novel. So this Captain Marvel novel is specifically to tie in to Marvel Comics. And after reading it twice, once on a header here on the Marvel website, I think that it's pretty positive to see that yes, this is going to be a canon story for Marvel Comics. Now let's move on to the agenda which is being pushed with this novel, because that was my assertion before, that these novels are specifically going to be targeted towards women because, of course, they're going to push a feminist agenda, which is what they want to hold over the comics and make the ideological mindset of how the comic stories are produced. So again, I'll go over quickly what this article actually says about this novel. And again, you have to remember, this is on the Marvel website. An employee of Marvel is asking another employee of Marvel about a product that they produced for Marvel, and it is a conversation between two women, but really it is what Marvel specifically wants to give you as the takeaway for what this book actually is about. So first off, it gives you a little synopsis of what the story actually is for the novel. It reads like this. It says, Have you heard the story about the woman who fell from the stars? In Captain Marvel, Liberation Run, a young, inhuman pilot named Rhea is on the run and in search of freedom, only to cross paths with Earth's mightiest hero, Captain Marvel. Notice, of course, Earth's mightiest hero. And it goes on to say, Along for the ride are an assembled group of heroes to join in and lead the way for a cause near and dear to each of them. The story of struggle and self-worth is common throughout the galaxy, just as it is here on Earth. So, what is this struggle that is near and dear to each of the characters? Well, we'll get into that. But before we do that, did you notice the word self-worth? Because in my videos last week, I talked about the feminist hero story arc and how it is about getting rid of any self-doubt and how the creators of such stories want to get rid of all self-doubt and get rid of all negative voices as well. And as they say here, the story of the struggle and self-worth is common throughout the galaxy. And, briefly, who are the characters that are to back up Captain Marvel in this book? Well, they are Mantis, Ant-Man, and Amadeus Cho. So, why did they choose these characters? Well, Mantis is there because she is a, quote, an empath who can really get down to the root of what everyone is feeling. So, again, here we have everything comes down to feelings. You want Mantis in there because everything comes down to feelings. They also included Ant-Man because the girl, Rhea, who is the secondary character because Captain Marvel is the main character. This Rhea girl, she is a young girl and Ant-Man has a young daughter so he can relate to her. And they also bring in Amadeus Cho. Why? Because Amadeus Cho, as they specifically say here, is much closer to her actual age and he gets to show her what a person on Earth growing up looks like compared to her who has grown up as a slave. And of course, don't forget, Amadeus Cho has his intersectionality going on as well. And besides those characters, they also use Medusa from the Inhumans. And this is the quote from the author, why she had to include Medusa in this storyline. She said, I had to pay homage to my hair idol! Exclamation mark. Okay, so 
that gives you a little bit of the mindset of the author. However, I do have to say that the author of this book, Tess Sharp, she actually is well versed, it seems, from this article, in the actual history of Marvel Comics and the characters that make up Carol Danvers' backstory. And she wants to include characters from that backstory. So she is tying it in specifically with the Marvel comic storylines instead of like that other Captain Marvel YA novel that I was going over, which was tying it in with the movie. But of course, that would be another thing to point to the fact that this novel is actually going to become canon within the Marvel comic universe itself. So if you're still listening and you thought that I was being a little bit heavy-handed when I talked about feminist political propaganda that they're going to use within these books, I'll give you just three quotes from this article itself that describes this book to prove my point. So my first quote is from Tess Sharp, who is the author of this book, and this is what she says. Carol is really well versed in the sexism and misogyny of our world, and also the sexism and misogyny that exists in the universe at large, because unfortunately it ain't restricted to us earthlings. One of the dangerous things about existing as a person who has to deal with misogyny in this world is that sometimes you experience so many everyday occurrences of it, you become used to it. But I think that no matter how well versed you are, how well read you are, how well prepared you are, there are always moments of misogyny that you experience or witness that fans the ever-present fire in your gut into a full-out flame. I think meeting Rhea was a moment like that for Carol. The fire in her gut is always lit, but having the result of such an evil regime in front of her in the form of Rhea fanned that fire into something Demaria could never have expected. So Demaria is the world that this little slave girl is from. So that's the first quote. Do you think there might be a little bit of political ideology stuck into this book? Perhaps. Just a little. So she claims that sexism and misogyny in our world is rampant and throughout the universe in the Marvel comics, of course, and that you have to be well versed and well read and well prepared for this sexism and misogyny as it comes your way because it's so ingrained in everything that sometimes there's just so much of it and you get used to it that you don't even know that it's there. And what it should do for women is fan a flame within their gut to make them so upset that this actually exists. It should light a fire within them. So a little farther down in the article, the woman from Marvel.com asks this question. There's a lot of recognizable pop culture references in the book. From Sweet Valley High to Roxanne Gay and The Handmaid's Tale, tell me about incorporating some of these nods to authors, books, and fandom. And this is the response the author gives. Rhea has been deprived of both literary mirrors and windows and has been steeped instead in political propaganda, which is very intense. Having the team share their love of reading and some of their favorite books and feminist scholars is a chance to not just right the wrongs done to her, but also shout out some of my favorites because fandom is a beautiful thing and I would not be the writer I am without it. So here's the basic statement of the author. She says that this little slave girl has been enslaved to political propaganda as well and has never been exposed to seeing other people through the mirrors and windows of literature throughout her life. And to free her from this political propaganda, they give her books to read and feminist scholars to read because that's going to free her from political propaganda, right? Because remember, as it said in the quote just a minute ago, you have to be well-read, well-versed, and well-prepared for this sexism and misogyny. So how do you get well-prepared? Well, you become well-read through feminist scholars, of course, and that's how you get to recognize all of this sexism and misogyny that's out there, and that's going to free you from the propaganda that the world actually tries to tell you about what being female actually is. And you will learn, supposedly, about freedom from these books like The Handmaid's Tale and from feminist scholars. Now I'll give you just one more quote. The woman from Marvel.com asked this question. We watch Rhea grow and become more confident throughout the book. Truth is power is an important takeaway in this book. Why is that theme important to you? And here's what Tess Sharp, the author, answers. 
People who experience misogyny in this world get gaslighted a lot, and I wanted to touch on that in this book. I don't particularly hold to the adage, truth will set you free, because sometimes it takes a lot more than that. But there is a tremendous power and strength in truth, and in knowing it, and in holding to it. So, as I had said in a number of my other videos, it all boils down to power. Just like here, she says she doesn't really believe in the adage that truth will set you free, but truth is power, and you can use that power to set yourself free. Free from what? Free from the gaslighting of misogyny that is everywhere in this world. Because, as she says, people who experience misogyny in this world get gaslighted a lot. So, just from these three quotes itself, you see that this is what the woman wants to do. She wants to talk about the fact that sexism and misogyny is everywhere in this world. So much so that people get gaslighted by it and don't actually know that it is there because it's so ingrained in our everyday life and you experience it just so much everywhere that sometimes you don't even notice that it's there. And in order to free yourself, like this little slave girl, what you do is you become well-versed, well-read in feminist literature and feminist scholars, and they can free you. Those feminist scholars, they will free you from that political propaganda that has blinded you to what is going on in this world. And when that happens, then it will fan a flame within your gut. It will light a fire within you. Of course, a fire of anger. When you talk about someone having a fire in their gut, that is a fire of anger. So that is what is supposed to happen when you become become free. You become angered at the way that the world actually is. And you will seek freedom from this misogyny and sexism that is everywhere in this world. So that's the gist of what this book is going to be about. And as I said, it seems like it really is going to be a tie-in to Marvel Comics, because they can't put this stuff into Marvel Comics enough, they just can't get it to stick within the Marvel Comics enough, so they're going to start shipping it out into Marvel novels that are going to be superimposed onto the actual canon of Marvel Comics, so that this feminist ideology is going to be the worldview of everyone within the Marvel comic universe sooner than you think. So. If I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye.